Welcome to episode 49 of Talking Shirts. I'm Mike from Hull Car Shirts and today we're going to take a look at the 2012 Home Shirt. So the 2012 Home Shirt is probably one of my favourites, especially from that, that decade of the, the 10s, shall we say, the 2010s. It, it feels like it's just that, it's really simple in its design. It does have some little quirks to it, but it's very simple. It's just white shirt, red band across the chest and it, it works, you know, sponsor integration on the whole is really good. Uh, it, it just it just works, it, like I say, it works. Uh, Berda Sports, they were the manufacturers for this shirt. So we'd been with Berda uh, for two years. We had them in 2012 and again in 2013. I think the 2012 designs was much better than the 2013. Uh, the, the away shirt in 2013 really, I'll pop a picture up. It was one that I, I wasn't keen on. Uh, it just didn't, didn't work anything for me. Uh, the 2013 home shirt, again, I'll pop a picture up for you. It was okay, but it just wasn't, yeah, it just didn't sit. Whereas this and the away shirt from 2012, which I'll pop up again, you know, we all, we all remember the, uh, the magic moment of David Hodgson wearing that shirt, probably, you know, the most iconic moment of, of that season. Um, but again, we're talking about the home, so let's jump back to this one. Uh, I mentioned a second ago about sponsor integration. We have got obviously the, the design sponsorship here who have got themselves re-involved re with the club again uh, for 2022. Uh, we've got the Berda logo appearing in red. Obviously, we've got the cool crest. And then we've got the higher base featuring in the in the red band, in white, which is obviously very well integrated in with the colour of the shirt. And KMS Energy, they appear up here, which is obviously the old collar sponsorship position, which did drop when the 10 over collars appeared on shirts less and less. So again, that's in a, in a, in a, like a limey green colour. You know, it, it doesn't look great, but it doesn't look mega awful either. It's just kind of there, isn't it? Uh, the, the collar design here, interesting, is, is actually different to that on the replica shirt. So I'll pop a picture up of the replica shirt just while we're talking about it. So what you'll see here is that we've got the reinforced stitching coming on around here. And then we've got this little red sort of V that appears within the... In the cutout, shall we say, and then we've got the collar, which then is pretty similar to that on the replica. And we have a band here, which I'll pop a picture up now so you can see. And this is just some reinforced stitching that goes all the way around there, so it just kind of limits that little bit of you know pull that a player would get whilst trying to sort of grapple, shall we say, a player to the ground. Spinning it round to the side here. Uh, we've got the Build Base logo up here, which is a, a, substitute, a substitute company of um, Higher Base. And then we've got the space here, where again, this is normally where we'll have some sort of Super League sponsorship. Um, it's kind of changed around this area because until this point, we did have a competition sleeve patch there. But there was quite a few uh, sponsorship issues, shall we say, uh, ahead of the 2012 season, which did, did kind of cause a few issues, shall we say. So that, that space there did remain clear throughout the season. And flinging it around to this side, we've got the, the Jackson Building Centre logo here. That's also sublimated in. That's in their natural colourway. And then we've got this Heinz Big Soup patch. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Don't really know what to say about that. Looks like a tin of peas, doesn't it? Colourway of tin of peas, wedding of big soup. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> pulling it round to the back, and as you can see here, this shirt was likely worn by, definitely issued to Scott Wielden for that 2012 season. Um, Scott joined us from Hull FC. Uh, I think it was the for the 2010 season, was it? Um, yeah, hard worker, always ran his ran his blood to water. Just played played the game his way. Um, Wielden represented quite a few different clubs obviously represented Hull FC, London, Castleford, uh, Sheffield, Featherstone uh, just to name a few of his uh, previous clubs there but yeah this one as I've said was from the 2012 season so we've got Wielden and his squad number for that year 22 there is a bit of cracking going on here to the number and the name no sorry not the number there's no cracking on the number just the name so yeah a little bit of cracking in the O and the D here um, I've popped a picture up there so you can just see it a little bit closer up. So that does carry some game detail, um, sorry, game damage, which does make me feel like 
it probably has been worn, but I've just not been able to find any photo evidence shooting from the rear where I can line up the name with the sublimated entities on the back of the shirt. So it'll be one of those things where when I'm least looking for it, it'll pop up and I'll be able to, to hopefully match it to a known game. So on the back of the shirt, again, we spoke really about the sponsor integration on the front mostly being good. On the back, it, again, it, all of the brands have got their logos in their natural colourways. It doesn't necessarily stand out as in it looks awful. Uh, it doesn't blend in with the aesthetics of the shirt like some of the others do, but it's okay. I feel like we get away with it. So we've got the East Yorkshire shit is limited at the top there. Hobson Porter with their branding and then Hull College who have been a long-standing brand partner to the club. Uh, an interesting fact about this shirt is that the red band on the player spec shirts stops so that you can actually see the number visibly and you're not trying to get the black number over the red and the white of the band. It's something that I feel on a, on a shirt really works but when you then compare it to the replica and have a look at the back of that and it goes all the way around it's not really the same obviously you know should the replica stop as well nah, I don't know I feel like you can be sort of getting down a, a long little rabbit hole there and digging yourself into possibly even bigger problems but it's just an interesting fact about a difference between the replica and the the player spec shirt and um, yeah, just, just jumping back to Scott Wheeler, I think it was ahead of the 2009 season that we signed in, not 2010. So, yeah, sorry, Scott, I've talked you out of a year there, bud. Um, but, yeah, he did make 77 appearances for Rovers, and in that time, he scored four tries. Uh, 2012 was his last season with Rovers, so this could have potentially have been uh, one of the last shirts that he wore during that 2012 season. So, we'll bring it back around to the front. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention as we were talking about it the first time, so I am going to come back to it now, is, is the piping. So there's some red piping that kind of goes down here, which kind of forms uh, a bit of a design element. And then we have an embroidered stitch which kind of waves across the front there. And then we've got another one that goes around the bottom. I feel like the addition of those little bits of piping really just finishes the shirt off nicely. In the sense of that if it had just been all white uh, with that red band, I, I, it just didn't doesn't have that um, final finishing touch, and just by adding that piping in the red, I feel really does just finish the shirt off, and it makes the aesthetics of it just yeah really 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 good. Okay, right, so that's everything for episode forty nine. Thank you very much for, for checking out with us today. I really do appreciate that. Uh, feel free to have a look at my website. There's all sorts of different Rovers related shirt content going on over there. Um, again, if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel, that would be greatly appreciated. You do get early access to the videos when I upload them to YouTube before I do publish them to social media. And it's also good to sort of see some, some feedback and some recognition of what we're actually trying to do here. So yeah, if anybody's got any sort of feedback, whether it be positive, negative, as long as it's constructive, I don't care because I feel like that's how we, we develop and how we make things better. So yeah, if anybody's got any comments, feel free. Uh, to let us know on any of the social media channels. Uh, you can email me at hullkrshirts at gmail.com. Um, yeah, anything you want to see covered, just give me a shout. Okay, thank you very much for watching today. I'll be back in a couple of weeks' time for episode 50. Wow, 5 -0. And I've got a very special shirt to cover. See you soon. Bye for now.